Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi, welcome to my lecture series. In this video, I will talk about French's turbine. French's turbine is a kind of reaction turbine. A reaction turbine is one in which a significant portion of the pressure drop takes place in the rotor. Hence, these are designed so that the fluid fills the rotor completely. Also, any such machine must have the rotor enclosed so that the decrease in pressure of the fluid takes place in the runner passages and not freely in all directions. The water exiting the turbine has a considerable amount of kinetic energy and also pressure. Hence, it is essential that this type of turbine is completely enclosed. Reaction turbines are classified according to the direction of flow of water in the runner. If the direction of flow is predominantly radial, then the turbine is called a radial flow turbine. If the direction is mainly axial, then it is called an axial turbine. Two of the most common examples of these turbines are the French's turbine and Kaplan turbines. The first well-designed French's turbine was built in 1849 by a hydraulic engineer named James B. Francis. As originally, originally conceived, it was a purely radial machine. Generally, all inward flow direction hydraulic turbines are called French's turbines. But modern designs of French's, French's turbines have some mixed flow characteristic, which mix between axial and radial flow. And French's turbine require medium heat and medium quantity of water. This is the schematic diagram of a French's turbine from top view. And this is from front view. It consists of a spiral casing, a runner, a set of guide vanes, and a draft tube. The inlet of spiral casing is connected to the penstock. Water is uniformly distributed around the circumference of the runner by using the spiral casing. In order to distribute the water uniformly around the circumference, it is necessary to reduce the area available for flow. Thus, the casing takes the shape of a spiral, which gives the maximum area at the entrance and almost zero at the tip, hence the name spiral casing. Water from the spiral casing is guided onto runner by a set of circumferentially placed guide veins, which are sometimes called wicket gates. These can be set to any desired angle and their shape is designed so that the water passes over them with minimum friction losses. The water then passes through the runner and discharges into a draft tube. So the main component of a French's turbine is the spiral casing, which constitutes a closed passage whose cross-sectional area gradually decreases along the flow direction. Area is maximum at inlet and nearly zero at the exit. And the guide veins which direct the water onto the runner at an angle appropriate to the design. The motion to them is given by means of a hand wheel or automatically by a governor called governing mechanism. It changes the position of the guide blades to affect a variation in water flow rate when the load conditions on the turbine change. And the blade which for French's turbine uh, typically varies between 16 to 24 blades. And the, the important part or component of a French's turbine is draft tube, which is gradually expanding tube, which discharges water passing through the runner to the tail race. <coughs> 
this figure show a few veins inside a French turbine with O is the center of the wheel and R1 is the outer diameter of the wheel and R2 is the inner diameter of the wheel. If we look into this specific vein, water will come into the inlet tip of the vein and exit the vein through the outlet tip of the vein. Now let's look into the velocity triangles at the inlet and outlet of the vein. Water will come to the inlet of the vein with velocity v1 and the vein will move at velocity u1 and the angle between v1 and u1 is known as alpha 1 or also known as the guide plate angle. If we extend to the point at the end of v1 up there we will get v w1 or the world velocity or actually the horizontal component of v1 and the vertical component of v1 vf1 is the yellow arrow here and the relative velocity vr1 is the red arrow and the angle between vr1 and the direction of motion is beta 1. At the outlet, water will come out with relative velocity vr2 and the blade will move with velocity u2. We can see here clearly that the magnitude of u2 is much larger than u1 which means that the veins get energy from the water and now move faster compared to u1. The angle between vr2 and u2 is called beta2. In Francis turbine, in modern Francis turbine, if the water is go out from the vein axially, that means alpha 2 is equal to 90 degree, which means V2 will equal Vf2. And therefore, Vw2, which is the horizontal component of V2, which will also equal to 0. Power generated by Francis turbine is very similar to the power generated by Pelton turbine. And before we go further, it's good to have a velocity triangles here for our reference. This is the equation to calculate power generated by Francis turbine. If we look carefully, this is very similar with power generated by Pelton turbine except that we have u1 and u2 terms here because in pelton turbine the velocity at the inlet and outlet or the blade velocity at the inlet and outlet is the same we simply denote as u but in french's turbine u1 is not equal u2 so the equation to calculate the power generated by french's turbine will be something like this. And note here, we have the plus minus sign here. This is actually for the positive sign is if the condition of alpha 2 is bigger than 90 degrees and positive sign if alpha 2 is less than 90 degrees. But in our case, the modern Francis turbine, the outlet of water or the water exit the runner axially, which means alpha 2 is equal to 90 degrees. And we know that if alpha 2 equal to 90 degrees, Vf2 will equal V2. 
and there will be no horizontal component of V2, therefore VW2 will equal to 0. This is the ideal and best condition for Francis turbine that will give maximum output. So we can cancel out VW2 because it's equal to 0 and we will get the maximum output to Francis turbine is equal to rho AV1 VW1 U1. Hydraulic efficiency can be calculated by having the power developed by the runner over the hydraulic energy supplied at the inlet of the turbine. So we have calculated the power generated by the Francis turbine previously and we just divide that with the hydraulic energy supplied at the inlet of turbine. With this equation, we will get the hydraulic efficiency will equal rho AV1 VW1 U1 over rho AV1 GH. So we can cancel out these terms and we get a final equation for hydraulic efficiency for Francis turbines is equal to VW1 U1 over GH. Next, the mechanical efficiency. Mechanical efficiency is the power available at turbine shaft during the power developed by turbine runner, or simply the shaft power over the bucket power. These two powers differ by the amount of mechanical losses, for example, losses that caused by bearing friction. Finally, the overall efficiency. Um, in hydroelectric power plant, energy is transferred from fluid to the turbine runner. During this transfer process, some energy will be lost. This efficiency is given by hydraulic efficiency. Then, from the runner, the energy is transferred to rotate the shaft that connected to a generator. Again, during this transfer process, some energy will be lost and the efficiency is given by mechanical efficiency. The overall efficiency of this process inside the turbine is the product of hydraulic efficiency and mechanical efficiency. If we plug in those efficiencies in this equation, we can cancel this term to get a final form of equation as PS over rho G QH or simply the ratio between shaft power and fluid power and the typical value we look into the design aspect of Francis turbine by looking at some important working proportion. The first one is ratio of width to, to diameter or B over D, which is the ratio of width to the diameter of the wheel at inlet is represented by N equal B1 over D1. And the values of N typically varies between 0.1 to 0.45. Next is the flow ratio Kf. Kf is the ratio of the velocity of flow at inlet to the theoretical jet velocity that can be calculated by the Vf1 over square root of 2gh. And the value of Kf varies from 0.15 to 0 0.30. Next is the speed ratio KU. Speed ratio is the ratio of the peripheral speed at inlet to the theoretical jet velocity which can be calculated by U over square root of 2GH and the values of KU ranges from 0.6 to 0.9. Finally, we want to look into the advantages of a Francis turbine over Pelton wheel. The first one, in Francis turbine, the variation in the operating heat can be more easily controlled by util utilizing the guide vane. And the, operation, the operating heat can be utilized even when the variation in the tailwater level is relatively large when compared to the total heat. And the mechanical efficiency of Pelton wheel decreases faster with wear and tear compared to Francis turbine. 
and the size of the runner, generator, and powerhouse required is small and economical if the French's turbine is used instead of Pelton wheel for same power generation. Not least, the disadvantage, disadvantages of French's turbine, which is water which is not clean, can cause rapid wear in high heat French's turbine, and the overhaul and the inspection is much more difficult comparatively because it's in uh, close casing. And cavitation is an ever present danger because of the um, the pressure difference at the outlet of the vein, but it's uh, overcome with um, uh, the draft tube, but sometimes it could happen as well. And if French turbine is run below 50% heat for a long period, it will not only lose its efficiency, but also the cavitation danger will become more serious. And that's it for French turbine. So a quick recap, we have learned the component of a French turbine, velocity triangles for French turbine, the power generated by French turbine, efficiency of French turbine, working proportion or the design aspect of French turbine and advantages and disadvantages of French turbine compared to Pelton wheel. Thank you for your time. As usual, if you have any suggestion, suggestion for uh, improvement, please get in touch. Bye-bye.